Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for pets. Before I get to that, please remember this is a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, this game is huge! Oh my goodness, not only is it epic in scope in terms of its gameplay, but just in terms of its uh, footprint. I mean, I, I, I really shouldn't bury the lead here, folks. Not all of you will be able to play this game. This board has got... This has got to be the biggest game I have played in years. I mean, physically, on the table. I mean, I don't think it's quite as big as... Quest for the Ring, which was so big it literally had two different boards to make the one big board of Middle Earth. But I mean, this game board is huge, and the player boards are huge also. So if you've got a lot of people around the table and everybody's got their own player board, plus um, your pest and your um, uh, aid cards hang off the edge of the boards, as do the technologies and whatnot, D something you got to know going in. Not everybody's going to have a table that can handle this beast. And that's a real shame, because the gameplay is really great. I've got to say, what really drew me in was this core idea. It's going to be very difficult for me to show it. Let me just go on ahead and empty Jen's... I'm done filming. This core idea of every turn, you are going to pick one of these spaces to go that activates a row and a column. And once that space is occupied, that's it for that year. You have two, three, four workers. You've got to figure out other stuff to do. Uh, if you want to invent three times, uh, because, hey, there's a... Uh, you know, there's, there's a council imperative to invent a lot. You better find a way to strategically move and then harvest and then build uh, and every step of the way be able to invent as well. And this is awesome. I love this action selection mechanism. It's a lot of fun. And I love the mechanisms of, you know, getting more and more people. They come in sick. If, you, if your quarantine is overrun, they start hindering you and preventing you from being able to move around unless you've got technology that lets you get around it. But then eventually, when you can get them cured. They all come up here and they start doing research for you. Or you can reassign them out to the buildings you built so they can generate goods. Or you can send them to the capital city which will get you all kinds of benefits as well. This um, loop you have with um, you know earning the resources to save people's lives and give them you know jobs while you're at it. I absolutely love the story that is told here. And I, and I uh, granted I understand for some people the subject matter, it's still a little too soon. But, um, you know, this is not the real world Black Plague. This is just some, you know, never known, uh, you know, it's not fantastical. There's no monsters or fantasy stuff, but this is just some nameless fantasy kingdom that is going through six years of plague, and we are the doctors who try to keep people alive and literally build society back together. And I've said before, that is a story I love to see in games like Pandemic that celebrate real world first responders. I love celebrating medieval era, or renaissance era, first responders as well, because they are true heroes and we are heroes in the best possible sense in this game. Rebuilding the infrastructure of the world, giving people jobs, saving their lives. I, you know, I really enjoyed the fantasy I was able to project myself into. And I love that action selection mechanism too. Really, really cool idea. Just instantly fun, easy to understand, but really deep and interesting, crunchy decisions with some long-term planning. Right, Because if I do this plus this, that means, oh, then I can't do that plus that, but if I do this other thing, you know, I mean, all that kind of stuff is very nice too. Uh, then, on top of that, hey, every time you play, you have a different set of agenda cards that are going to give you different objectives that make certain things more or less attractive. You can't do everything. Are you really going to ignore the first year so you can be really set up to do a lot of stuff in the third year? I don't know, maybe so. Uh, or maybe you try to do a little bit of everything, you're wor working your influence, building, saving lives, uh, all the rest of it, investing in tons of different technologies, and and, um, you know, it's also really nice, too. I've seen a lot of games where, oh, you've got your three technologies. If you want another one, you have to throw that one away. Too bad for you. I love that in this game, hey, yeah, I've got to throw the other one away, but I do get still keep the points for it. I don't completely throw it away. It's not like I forgot that technology. I still get the renown for having invented something. So I love little touches like that, too, that reward you for investing early and getting payoffs over the course of the game. Now, all that said, I do have some problems with it. Now, most of these, I think, are, are just, you know, this is a prototype. So, I mean, there are literal changes that are being made to the design as we speak, which is always the case. Right now, um, you know, apparently building to the, you know, building the, the big central buildings apparently at one point was overpowered, so they've nerfed it. Right now, it feels a little underpowered, quite frankly. Maybe they just need to say, hey, not only do you get points when you build in the city, you get influence as well. If you get influence for building out in the countryside, surely you should be influential for building in the city also. Um, and uh, also, the, um, the, the race... For first and second place in a two-player game is just not that interesting because they ignore, in a, in a two-player game, the really good payday for coming in first 
You don't get that. That just doesn't exist. You're only fighting for second and third place. That's a real bummer and makes that contest significantly less exciting than it would be at a higher player count. And there are better ways they could have handled that. Um, the same thing for the influence. I love the fact that players can literally hopscotch over each other. But in a two-player game, that's just not that likely to happen. Um, because Whereas if you have four people, there's going to be a lot more of that. So there's a few little things that I think are going to be better at a higher player count than most. And maybe those would be things that they can kind of tweak over time. Uh, surely the rules need... Oh my gosh, the rules... Again... It's a prototype. They have a long time to clean this up. I'm confident they will. Um, and, I mean, so little issues aside, uh, you know, a, a little bit of tightening up for two player, a little bit of balance on some things that they are still in the process of doing, um, you know, making clear, hey, what are the things you earn points for during the game versus things at the end of the game? You know, that other games do that by just having a slightly different version of the victory point track or uh, icon. They'll do this stuff. Those things will be cleaned up. And I think after it's all done, they will, you will have a really Fun, fun game with fresh, interesting gameplay, very, very thematic, uh, and a really satisfying and fast playing game, too. As big as this game is, you'd think, oh my god, this game is going to take five hours to complete. No, this game zips along at a very, very brisk pace, and I really appreciate that, too. And if all that weren't enough, I'm showing you my prototype with just the default um, you know, characters and, and these uh, pieces for the city. There's a deluxe version of this game, folks then boy, is it deluxe. Look at what your city could look like. Um, and again, I, I don't know the particulars. You'll have to go to the Kickstarter page, or is it on GameFound? I don't remember. To the crowdfunding page and check out the particulars. But this is what the city could look like. And hey, here's where I send my people to the city. And when I invest in building, I don't just get these things. Oh, I build really cool looking towers and really cool looking basilicas and whatnot. So this is very, very neat as well. Oh, and then of course, the player models are looking great, too. Uh, as I understand it, they're all going to be just one universal color, and they'll have colored rings to indicate the player, as opposed to each character being. But, I mean, they look fantastic. So, the gameplay is really sharp. Jen and I very much enjoyed it. Really a lot of fun to be had. There's a few things that need to be cleaned up and tightened up, which is often the case when I cover prototypes. I often find that the case. And, hey, um, it's got really great production values, too. So... Really, I think the only big problem with this game, this is going to be true for some people, is this board is freaking huge. And uh, you might want to get out a tape measure before you decide if you want to back it or not. Um, because if you can make it fit, I think it might be one you'd want to check out. And that is the preview, folks, for Pest. Thank you very much for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go to the, uh, the crowdfunding page if you want to know more. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.